Recently, in the Dynamics Community's forums, there were questions from various subscribers on how to send emails to all of their customers. There can be many different options, and the right solution to this might greatly depend on the frequency and quantity. But I thought I would demonstrate a few different approaches to implement this using Microsoft Power Automate. This video will cover three scenarios. For the actual sending of the email, you can send the email using the Outlook 365 connector or the Common Data Service connector. A few of the things that you want to consider when sending mass emails are the limits of Power Automate actions and bulk email in Exchange Service. In our first scenarios, we will be sending emails to the primary contact for a selected account or group of accounts. Let's open the flow and take a look. I created a trigger of when a record is selected and added an input for an outage date. The flow will send a notification to the selected account for an upcoming outage. There are two additional actions, which are to retrieve the contact record of the primary contact in order to get the first name and the email address, and the final step that will send the email to the contact. Let's try and run the flow. I'll select a particular account click on flow and select system outage notice. On the next screen, we'll specify the outage date and click run flow. Now let's go back and check on the flow. And we'll see the flow has been succeeded. We'll go ahead and open the flow and we'll see the information that was passed from the system to the flow and finally that the email message has been sent. If we go into Outlook and click on the send items, I will see that the email message has been sent. For the second scenario, I'll be sending an email to all the associated contacts of a particular account. We will use the similar trigger for the selection of the account, but in this case, we're not going to require any input. The first thing that we need to do is to retrieve the contact records that are associated with the account. We will use the list records actions of the CDS current environment connector to retrieve all the associated contacts. I'm using fetch XML in this case to create the linked entity. If you are not sure what the fetch XML looks like, you can use advanced find in your model driven app, download the fetch XML of your query and substitute the account from the dynamic content page. Next, we'll use an Apply to Each control where I'll be creating a new record or new email message record and populating the correct options. So I'm populating the two party, the description, the regarding, which shows the account, and the subject of the email. Make sure you don't forget to use to use the prefix when using lookups. So when I use a lookup control, make sure you prefix it with either accounts or contacts based on the type of control that I'm using. Finally, we call the bound action to send email and pass the email message from the previous step. Let's go ahead and run this flow. I'll go back to my accounts again and I'll select a datum corporation as I know that this account has multiple contacts. I'll click on flow and select the send email to all account contacts. If 
You don't necessarily have to open the record for this. I just opened it to demonstrate that I have the multiple contacts. Now let's go ahead and go back to our flow. And I'll notice that I have an action that was succeeded. I can go to my apply to each step and I will see that this was performed for both actions. It created a new record and performed the bound action. If I go to my activities window, window and refresh this window, I should see now two additional notices that have been completed. If I open any one of those notices, I will see that the email has been sent and the email content or the message that was created. In our final scenario, we will create a scheduled flow that will execute every month, retrieve the primary contact for each account, and send an email message to the contact containing maintenance notice. I'll click on the Add button, and we'll start this by adding a recurrence trigger. When adding a recurrence trigger, just search for recurrence in the Search Connectors and Triggers search box. You can change the schedule as needed. Run it on a monthly, weekly, daily, or even hourly and minute basis. <coughs> or if this needs to ev execute every, every few hours, that is fine as well. We then call the list record CDS action to retrieve all of the accounts and their associated contacts. In this particular case, I used a select query it got the values that I needed. I used a filter query, but I also did an expand query where I could get the email address, the first name and the last name of the contact or of the primary contact that is associated with this particular account. I'll run the apply for each and do it send email. And you will notice that my two record contains the email address of the primary contact and my description or the body also has the first name of the primary contact. In order to test this flow, I'll go ahead and click the test button and select outperform the trigger action. I'll click on test and then select run flow. I'll see a message that the flow has run successfully. I'll click on done and it will show me the flow is running. The test run will take approximately 15 seconds, and once it's completed, we'll be able to see the results in the same items in Microsoft Outlook. Let's take a look, and I'll see that I have one of 10 emails that have been sent. I can go back into my Microsoft Outlook, and in my sent items, I'll see that I have 10 messages that were sent for this particular flow. I would probably say that this is not a one-size-fits-all, but the combination of these three options might just help you out in what you're trying to achieve. Remember the limitations that I mentioned earlier in Power Automate and Exchange. I hope this video was helpful, and keep watching. Thank you very much.